used to being called that. To where you can't tell when the line is crossed. Like it's the whole fucking point of all of this shit is to fuck up your vision. To where you cannot tell where the fuck you stepping, what's good, what's bad, what's up, what's down. So that they can get you in a situation where you tell on your motherfucking self. To get a deal, you gotta dance on a fucking table like a fucking monkey. If you don't do that, they say that you don't have no motherfucking persona. You don't got no motherfucking pizzazz. If you don't dance in a room full of white people. I can use the word white people now. Because everyone in that, in that room isn't white supremacists. Those are just the people that the white supremacists gave a job to. In a culture where the only thing you think of is black people, the executives, everybody who called the shots, majority fucking white. I'm just pointing out the fucking obvious. I'm just pointing out what's going on. Can we can we can we start building? I I wanna build with you. I wanna build with you. All of our young rappers, every one of them, if they haven't been fucked up yet, it's coming. If the rapper hasn't been fucked up yet, it's on the way. Better believe if he has this is to all young rappers, because they, they're only getting stupid rappers. Only stupid rappers. I've already said this, name me an artist in the last year that's gotten a record deal that has a uh, high school diploma. That's not to say uh, the greatest rapper don't graduate high school. I don't give a fuck about that. So I'm telling you that they don't want you to be intelligent. It's damn near a requirement that you be a fucking idiot. It's a damn near requirement that you dropped out of high school because what that shows is that, all right, he's not one who will pursue anything. He doesn't have that much drive. Um... Uh, he'll give up on something really easy. So even if someone did, does get in his ear about, hey man, what you're doing is wrong, you're killing people, he's he's not probably going, he doesn't have that, um, he has a, uh, short, a short attention span to where he's not really going to connect the dots. He's just going to think about the here and now. And by the time he does wake up to what he's doing, we'll already have what we need out of him and we'll be on to the next one. Recognize... How fast these labels <laughs> boost up their new artists. Start looking at record labels like niggas. Start looking at record labels like niggas and the artists on their record label, the main artists on their record label like their old lady. So Atlantic would have um, uh, Cardi B. Universal would have, um, I don't want to say Universal, but just, just look at them like that. Um, and see how you would feel. Like, how would you feel about, I'm saying, not in the eye of a fucking, you know what I'm saying, like a street nigga. Just how would you feel about it if it was a white dude? White dude. It's a white dude. And look at the people that there are. So look at Atlantic as a business is a white man. Um... A president even. The president of Atlantic. Atlantic is a person and it's a president. President of the United States. And their main artist, Cardi B, would be their wife. So that's the first lady. Look at how quickly after Cardi B falls off. Or maybe they push up another artist. They get another wife before Cardi B even falls off. And you find out. The reason why she fell off is because they was pushing another artist. It is not the case. You will hear artists complain about how the label stopped believing in them. And believing means they stopped funding my projects. 
to where I used to have a million dollar budget for a for my rollout and shit like that. Maybe a, a million dollar uh, budget for a, a project and shit like that. And um, now they tell me get it how I live and make the project and then bring it to them and then they'll see what they're gonna do. So now where I used to get a million dollars, you don't give me any money. I used to get a million dollars up front to record a whole, that's for my marketing, that's for my, you know what I'm saying, that's my studio time, videos, and all shit like this, and I bring it to you, and then we run up, like, we, we work. Now you're saying do all the shit myself, and then bring it to you, and I can use your name, like I'm an Atlantic artist. Redman said that Def Jam, after all the work that Redman did, when he came to the building, he had to wear a guest badge. And it's fucked up because you retarded motherfuckers will get in these fucking offices with these labels and believe that no matter who, no matter what your album sales are, no matter what's going on, that y'all gonna be best pals. You're thinking that you're friends with these motherfuckers. Once you get it in your mind that they have an agenda. The word agenda. They have a motive. They're doing it for a reason. And if you're thinking that the reason is money. You're mistaken. They understand that money doesn't mean anything. They understand that money is a piece of fucking a tree. It's a piece of a tree. They know what true value is. It's not fucking money. It's time. It's time. These elite people do not want to die. I'm finna talk to you. They want you. They want the um, value of black lives to uh, depreciate so much to where no one blinks an eye whenever a young black corpse is found with no organs in it. Fuck it. Fuck it. This shit. I didn't want to speak on this shit. I'm not trying to get into no conspiracy theory or no shit like that. But I'm trying to tell you that the people that are in control know goddamn well that money isn't worth anything. These motherfuckers are working on ways to become immortal. So when we talk about, so now, understand in my mind, when we talk about this shit, about, ah, uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to bring motherfuckers to the same mindset that I'm on. So that all of us, I don't have the, I don't have, like, I don't have the answers. I'm trying to figure this shit out, but I didn't got up to this point of consciousness. So as I'm trying to bring niggas up to this point, I understand what these motherfuckers are doing. They're working against any knowledge being put into the minds of the motherfuckers that are being the victims. Nothing more than cattle. They don't want the cattle to become conscious of the fact that they're at a slaughterhouse. So they throw out artificial grass. They give you a time where you eat. They starve you and then feed you. Make it extremely hot, then cold, then perfect. Put you through all these changes so that you do not pay attention to the fact that you're on a conveyor belt.
What the fuck was that sound? Oh, look, oh. And I don't like the fact that they're using cows to distract the cows. And the cows are willingly distracting their own kind. NBA young boy mama ain't shit. Um, she's a grown ass kid, which is the issue we have with a lot of motherfuckers. Um, you go back to what NBA young boy said. He said that he didn't have no mama, so obviously we know what's going on there. Um, she's she on an interview with uh, White Mike. Shout out to White Mike from uh, Coast to Coast, our third coast. She on an interview with him. Talking about, um, he said when did he start getting in trouble and she just smiled. <laughs> By six. Oh, no, nah, I'm just playing. By 11. Yeah, he been active. Oh, yeah, he been active. Because that's cute. Every black bitch is proud of having a bad child. Every black hoe. Every black bitch is just proud as fuck to have a Look at his bad ass. He's so bad. But you so bad, boy. You bad, ain't you? And this is what happens. She raised a bad child. She had three kids already. Three kids she got. Whatever. She had two. She couldn't take care of them motherfuckers. And she had another one. And this is what we get. And here she is. Still talking about a motherfucking boyfriend. The best thing that happened to her. Was NBA young boy becoming chosen pals. That's the best thing that happened to her. She get her a little money if she pee, if she if he peace off. But her son is killing people. Knowledge is life. It's not power, it's life. If you put your hands in front of my face to where I can't see a stop sign, you just kill me. If you put your hands in front of my fucking face, if you distract me. So I can't see the traffic light and I run that bitch. It's your fault. If I was on the phone with you and, and I was making you mad, then that shit happened on motherfucking uh uh why I get married or some shit like that when Janet Jackson was talking to that nigga and at the end of the shit, whatever, they were arguing and shit like that, and he got in the car trying to leave and he got in a wreck and died or some shit like that. She felt responsible because I distracted you. This is no different. Am I insane? If you're the reason that I'm not focused, and you can and you can believe me, you can take that stance of it's not my fault that motherfucker wasn't focused. You should be focusing. You can definitely take that stance. But that also makes you a sociopath. Someone without a conscience. Not just someone who doesn't take accountability or responsibility. But someone who doesn't have a conscience, if you can do this day in and day out and hear time after time somebody getting killed and what's the music that's playing while they slumped over the goddamn uh, steering wheel, uh, honking the horn, uh, is your song and you don't feel nothing off of that, you're a sociopath. And your motherfucking, and your. Destination is already set. Your destination is already set. Um, DJ Vlad has an interview where Malice, which is one half of the clips, says the reason why he had to get out of rap music and shit like that was because um, he realized how many people were dying while listening or selling dope, going to jail. Like, fucked up shit happening to them while listening to his music. That bothered him. The thought of it. I don't believe young boy had a chance. I don't think he had a chance. 
and they made sure that he didn't have a chance because during the time where he could have been rehabilitated and maybe have been able, do you think that NBA Youngboy would give all of his fame and all his money back if he can have a non-positive HIV, I mean herpes status? Do you think, how much do you think he's willing to give to be able to be normal? And not have an STD because now, what I was trying to tell you before, like a label can't use you. You can't make no whole songs no more. Like what's what's like you think? Do you like you finna find out? Write in the comment section. Do you believe that hoes are still gonna want him after knowing he has herpes? A dope boy. The reason why he can still fuck hoes. While having AIDS is because that AIDS ain't stopping his money. As an, a rapper, your money depends on the dream, the thought in a whole mind that y'all gonna fuck. Every fan feels like y'all gonna get the fuck. Like I'm, I'm gonna go backstage with him and shit like that. Once that shit dissipates, now the niggas no longer envy you. They don't want to be you. They want to be everyone but you. I, the reason why I'm going I'm to I'm continue to speak to y'all and uh, try to show y'all what's going on through other people's mistakes is because you may not be picking them out this way. You may not see it in this manner, but my goal is to get it to where I have to switch this rap shit back to where white supremacists no longer control it. Understand that as long as white supremacists run this game and it is the more of a... The more... Hey, y'all. Stop. Hey, y'all hear me? Start running up them goddamn steps now. Huh? As long as the white supremacists have it to where their requirements are for you to. They took, once white supremacists got a hold, and understand when I say white, understand what I'm telling you. I, I don't want you to take this as, ah, oh, nigga on that race shit. Understand what I'm trying to tell you. This rap shit was different when it was ran by At this point, these motherfuckers that are in control are not making it easier for anybody to make it. They're making it harder for the right people to. I'm, a, I'm just, I, I guess I ain't talking to nobody. Is anybody goddamn listening? They're not making it easier for just anybody to make it to make it. They're making it hard. They're making it impossible for the right people to get in and do what music, rap music, was made to do, which is uplift, enriching the black man's spirit, the black community as a whole. Music now does nothing nothing but bring out the worst in a nigga some of your favorite artists you don't understand that they wouldn't be your favorite artists 
if your demons weren't in control of you right now. I'm not, I'm not preaching to you. But I'm telling you something that you already know. You know that you're not where you need to be at. You got that feeling like it, like the positive side of you. It keep on trying to come through. It keep on trying to talk to you. But every time it try to, hey man, let me get your attention. Hey bitch, let me get your attention. You killing us. You killing us. Every time your, the real you, your, I'm talking when you was, when it, you know, when you was normal, when you was good, before this black spirit took over you, this black entity took over you, before you became the motherfucker that you are now, that motherfucker's still alive. And your favorite fucking artist is killing, killing, killing. Until that black entity is going to become who you are. And as soon as it gets you to the point of no return, it's going to leave you. It's going to leave you all alone. No more fucking music. And you're going to see what the fuck happened. It did its fucking job. That entity, that demon, that black spirit on top of you got you to where the fuck you, it wanted you to be. It tricked you. Now you're in prison for life. Now you in hell. Now you in purgatory. And if you don't believe it, I, I, I challenge you. I challenge you to go one day without listening to no music and don't do no drugs. And I guarantee you will hear exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. I challenge you for 24 hours. Stay sober and don't listen to any fucking music. And I guarantee Reflex Podcast. I'm a Yoke and Seiko.